Welcome everyone to the Fight Network Studios. I am your host, John Ramdean, and this is Fight News Now Extra. Robin Black will join me to discuss the news of the day. Making headlines, a former Strike Force champion failed to drug test, Rage and Al is pulled from his upcoming tilt, and the UFC trims their roster. Former UFC lightweight title challenger Gilbert Melendez has failed his UFC 188 post-fight drug test. The former Strike Force champion dropped a split decision to Eddie Alvarez in Mexico City this past June. El Nino will be suspended one year, and who knows if it will see him back inside the cage. Gilbert Melendez was ready to step in on short notice to face Chris Weidman training partner Al Iaquinta. The two were set to meet at Fight Night Mirror vs. Duffy, which is scheduled for July 15th in San Diego, California. Both men have been pulled from the card, and Josh Thompson and Tony Ferguson will now serve as the co-main event. And the UFC once again cleans house as they drop 14 fighters from their roster. On the list, Robbie Peralta, Lisa Ellis, MFC veteran Ryan Jimmo, and former TKO champion Hatsu Hiyoki. UFC 189 goes down this weekend. We are getting you set. Tune in to FN at 7 p.m. Eastern. Robin Black and Bridget Trong will bring you all the action as we are getting set for the action in Sin City. And then following the pay-per-view, lock it back to FN for our post-fight show. You get all the great analysis and the post-fight press conference. Now joined by Robin Black. Uh, terrible news for mixed martial arts fans, but worse news for Gilbert Melendez. Uh, he's going to be out of competition for a year. We're starting to see the face of mixed martial arts change. Uh, we saw Mike Richmond get suspended, Alexander Schlemenko get suspended, Gilbert Melendez. I think everybody will be affected by this thing. Uh, when you look at Gil and you look at his age and that he's been around this game for a long time and we know that mixed martial arts has become a young man's game. Is a year out of competition, is that a big thing right now? It's a big thing for a guy in his mid-30s, for sure it is. And it's going to be tricky too because Part of his contract with the UFC that that Bellator offered him and they matched involved some television appearances, bit of whether it's analysis at the desk or some other work like that. Yep. Now with a failed drug test, does that void like that? Jail. So yeah. So I don't know. It's a tough one. It's a weird one when you look at it. If I were to go to the doctor and say, hey, you know, when I'm trying to get frisky with the old wife, it's not working. It is working, by the way. No <laughs> problems there. But if I did go to a doctor and say that, doctor would say, hey, why don't you take one? of these 15 or 20 prescription things, some of them are pumps, there's a one that's a deodorant that will boost your testosterone. You see commercials for them on television, Spike TV, anywhere where men watch TV, there's commercials for them all the time. Guys are jogging, guys, are, their <laughs> wives are smiling. You, anybody can get that. And it will not necessarily, if you're going to be healthy, it won't raise your testosterone to an unhealthy level. It'll just make you jog and smile, <laughs> make your wife smile. That's, they're selling that stuff. Everybody, the bus driver can get it. But you can't take it if you're a professional athlete. Is that right? Is that wrong? I don't know. But you can't take it. Before they started testing the way they are with this advanced testing, guy took a little of that, whatever it was. If it wasn't elevated, it was safe, same as a bus driver, no problem. But now any amount of artificial testosterone, synthetic testosterone, you're going to pop hot. And poor Gil, he's had a rough week, man. Yeah, Giblert. Now, poor uh, Giblert. we know that this is going to affect the landscape of the sport. And we talked about it in the last number of months that we expect to see a mass exodus of mm -hmm. athletes that are, have been competing in mixed martial arts that just can't com uh, compete under these new guidelines. Do you expect that we, we're starting to see that right now? Uh, yeah, maybe so. I don't think Gilbert, I don't think anybody who knows is like, this is a crazy juicer, this is yeah, a cheater. Right. It's a guy who pushed what the limits were very acceptable, that kind of like unwritten rule of if a dentist can take it in a, in a and a bus driver can take it and you can do it safely and it doesn't really give you a massive advantage, maybe guys will do it. I think that's the scenario Well, that's not okay anymore. I think we'll see a very different sport going forward. You're not going to see these guys in their mid-40s and their later 40s going and being able to compete at a high level. And it, it's probably a change for the better. It's a change for better health for these guys, better long-term health, but it will definitely affect some of them. Well, we know Gilbert Melendez, uh, he's one of the fortunate ones that uh, have been able to make money in mixed martial arts. So I don't think this year is going to hurt them like some of the other fighters on the roster uh, in the sense that you know they're not making money anyways yeah. they've got to wait till they get to that next stage of stardom so to speak where they start getting big paydays uh, but also you look at the fact that guilt now can take a step back and it can be a good thing mm -hmm. because a lot of especially a fighter of his stature and the, the wars that he's gone through how important is a break I think if Gilbert Melendez said after that fight 
I'm choosing to take a year off. I'm going to do a little TV yeah. work. I'm going to learn a little more a different angle on the sport. I'm going to uh, uh, save up my body and kind of regenerate myself and get my health together like Frank Mir did. I think it would have been very beneficial for him to take a year off. I think that's a benefit. But the way it happens, it's, it's damaging to people who don't necessarily are so in it. It's black and white. Oh, it's black. He failed. We know there's, there's areas of gray. There always has been. It's a changing time, and in changing times, things that were kind of okay are definitely not okay now, and you're going to get caught. UFC uh, trimming down their roster. Uh, we, I think we all expected Ryan Jimmo to, uh, to get the boot, but Hatsu Hiyoki, uh, are you surprised they, make, surprised they make a move like this, considering the option is to go to one championship, uh, especially for a guy like Hatsu Hiyoki? The, you know, we, when Hatsu Hiyoki fought last time, we were like, oh, this fight's so great. The small percentage of people that are obsessive fanatics love Hatsu Hiyoki. He never really caught on with the rest. The rest is where the money is made. Um, so it's a shame. He's, he's a great fighter. Ryan Jimmo, you said uh, the reason we knew he'd get uh, cut. He's is been very vocal. Yeah, he was very vocal. He said that he was in a unhealthy relationship and he was the beaten, the fighters were the beaten wife and the UFC was the abusive spouse. So he kind of saw that one coming. But however, I would have expected uh, after his last performance that within a week, they would have announced that uh, he was trimmed from uh, from the UFC's if roster. He, if but. he likes to keep fighting, Bellator is going to be an awesome fit for him. And that's the thing. So, you know, the UFC is starting to, you know, we've seen them do this from time to time, get rid of, you know, 10 or more fighters. But with Bellator and one championship, uh, what's the advantage, especially when you have names like Hatsuhio? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's a numbers game. I wonder if they each one, they do analyze it. They go, yeah, I think it's time to cut him. How's he going to... Is it going to affect if he goes? It isn't? Okay, cut him. You know, I think they'll weigh it a little. The landscape of mixed martial arts continues to sort itself out. Don't go anywhere. More FNNE is still coming your way.